Hello and welcome to Harpening. In this week's video we're doing a bass to a melody. The melody I already taught two weeks ago and um, it's called South Wind. And if you don't know it, go back to that video and learn how to do that melody. Then last week we did improvisations on the melody and today I'm going to give you some ideas on how to play chords with a melody. There's kind of two ways of learning a melody with chords. First one is to do it at the same time and just practice your left and your right hand. The second way to do it is to play your right hand first until you know the melody and then add your left hand. Now in this case, I already taught you the melody two videos ago, so it's kind of harder to go back and play it with the left hand at the same time. So we kind of started on the way of just doing the right hand and then adding the left hand. Plus that there is no left hand written out which also makes it a bit harder to play it at the same time. However, if you find yourself having a melody with the chords there already, what you can do is start off straight away learning the chords while you play the melody. We haven't done this because I thought it would be a bit too much to add that in the second week's video, but we can still do it now. So I would suggest you go and play the melody and just play the one bass note that is the chord and make sure that you know it and that you know which chord you're going to grab because that will make it much easier to switch around when you're trying to do like an improvisational left hand pattern. That means it would be sounding something like this. Start off and then do just one note, the G. to D and when you're doing this it helps to say it out loud so G C G so practice it while saying the chord out loud you can also say it while you're just playing the melody so you go like this G G So that you know which chord you're gonna have to get on your left hand. Now once you know, there's a few things you can do and in order to show them to you I will turn my harp around so that you can see what my left hand's doing. So the basic first thing to do is always play one note. Then you have the option after that to either grab the chord which is three fingers with one string in between. So I have G as the bottom string that the third finger always goes on the name of the chord. So if you have a G chord, third finger on G, then skip one string, B, skip one string, D. That would be your chord. So it would go like this, G, and again G, and then go to D. D, and D would be the third finger on the D, skip one string, second finger on the F skip one string, thumb on the A. So that's a D chord. This can be a good way to learn which chords are used and to really know how to grab them in the left hand, put them down together. But you can also use this and roll them so that it sounds a bit dreamy. rolled which means after one another but fast and all these notes are played before I play the melody so you hear it the right hand comes after the left hand Really nice arrangement. 
arrangement and people are going to love playing that. And when you make some variations in the right hand, it also uh, helps it get even more interesting. So you could actually play the whole piece twice with rolled chords, but do variations in the right hand and you would have a really nice piece already. If you don't want to play the chord, the other thing you can always do is playing fifths, which means basically the chord, but leave out your second finger. That it would sound like this. sounds a bit more open than the whole chord. One thing to keep in mind when you play the harp is that your lower strings always vibrate much longer, which means that if you play strings very much together, like a chord in the low bass, it's going to sound a bit more muddled at a point. When you play it in the middle, you can hear the strings quite clearly. When you play it low, it's going to sound more muddled. So one way to go when you're playing low on the harp is to keep more distance between your fingers. So when here a rolled chord sounds really nice, or even a normal chord played all together, let's say is what that's called. In the low bass, I would suggest you really stick to fifths. And then it can be like this. Especially the first bit of the A sentence it's that it has a repeated chord so you're doing the G chord twice what you can do in order to make a nice arrangement is to not do the same thing twice when you have the same chord twice so you could for instance do that bass fifth and then the second time do it rolled high and it would sound like this for the D but take the low D that makes for a nice pattern now if you don't have repeated notes then you're gonna have to make a choice so if I'm playing the first sentence like this then the second bit of the A part would be different because you have a G chord then a C chord and then the G chord again and there's the choice you can do only the fifth and then the fifth on C or you could do a fifth on G and then the roll chord on C and then back to G and that one gets placed twice so there would be a roll chord maybe in there so then it would sound like this do a fifth in the bass first fifth roll chord fifth on G could also use just that one bass note of a G and then do the roll chord high. Same thing, basically just leave out the fifth and make it only the bass note. Now these four variations have all been just playing on the first beat of the bar. We had just one note, a chord, which can be rolled as well, I'm seeing it as one, then a fifth, and then doing low and high rolled, so low fifth and high rolled, that's for variation. What you can also do is play that chord slowly, so not rolled but after one another. So play them out and then do a rhythm to it. 
In the case of Salquin, since the melody has this dotted chord note at the beginning of the melody, you can actually play these left hand two fingers in between before you play the right hand. And it would sound like this. it's a nice way to play it in your whole tune. When you want to do right hand variations you're going to have to kind of see where they go because if for instance if you have the right hand variation that we did in last week's video where you play quarter notes instead of a dotted rhythm all of a sudden your fingers have to play together so it'd be like this the first bit is the same together, left hand together. So it would actually be like these two together, left hand, and then together the thumb with the right hand C. So pay attention there if you want to do variations how the rhythm is going in your right hand. One of the ways to make sure that you know you have the right rhythm is to actually know the tune really well, make a recording of yourself, what you're doing, and listen to if you're doing the right uh, rhythm when you're playing the left hand. If not, then try to figure out where it should go. Now you have five left hand patterns that you can do, and you can mix them up, or you can just stick to one and play it that way. Usually when you're playing traditional tunes like this, you don't just play them once, you actually repeat them a few times. One of the ways to not make it boring is to do either right hand variations or do something different in your left hand. You have plenty of ways to try to do that now. One of the things that you could also do is to add an intro to the tune so that you don't just start out of nowhere, but you start actually with something as an introduction to your tune and then play the melody. There's many ways you can do that, but an easy way to do it is to use the chords of the last four bars that you're playing of the tune. So in this case, the last four bars are G, C, and then G twice. The introduction then could be your left hand pattern played over these chords. So G, C, G, and again G, and then you play the melody. And so on and so forth. You can use any of the left hand patterns that you did. You could also spread the pattern over two hands or you can just play your right hand melody that you're doing for these chords. So in this case, you would start actually four and a little bit before. So you would start with introduction on the bar 28 of the sheet music that I gave you with the C, the third beat, because the melody has an upbeat. So you would go like this. especially if you have a song because people will know when to start singing when you do an introduction like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week in a new video, the first one of August. We'll do the cookie series 
and we'll do variations on the cookies that we've done so far so that you learn to play them differently. In the meantime, tell me what's happening in your life. <laughs>